Etienne, CEO and founder of Civico Life. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, absolutely. Our pleasure. And so you are a millennial master herbalist and recognized herbal tea connoisseur. That's pretty amazing. Can you tell us a Thank little you. bit about what that means and a little bit of how you formed your company? So basically, I, I grew up in the Caribbean, a small island called Dominica, which is um, in the Eastern Caribbean, tiny island, um, which interestingly has the highest number of uh, centurions per capita for a small island nation in the world. And um, so I grew up sort of in herbalism, having a background in that. My mom was a traditional herbalist. After high school, I migrated to the U.S. to kind of further my education. But I always kind of continued with that passion for for herbs and for herbalism. And even while I was in college, sharing with my friends, I furthered my studies with, with the herbs as well, um, certifications and, and stuff like that. So um, about five, five or six years ago, um, I decided to, you know, branch out and launch the brand. But before I launched the brand, actually, I basically got from 10 people, 10 clients, like in different parts of the country, uh, who were having like, different types of ailments, uh, like one was a cancer patient, uh, one lady had like severe migraine attacks, uh, other people had like weight loss issues and stuff like that. And so I said, hey, I'm not going to charge you anything. Um, I just need your consent um, to sign this waiver. I basically uh, designed a 20-day program, right, which I provided like a nutritional plan, things to eat, things to avoid. And I provided, and I did my first like real herbal blend. And so I provided that to them. At the end of the month, the, the results were amazing. So um, like, for instance, just an example, the lady who was um, having severe migraine attacks, like she was having up to 25 to 26 attacks per day. It reduced to like only three attacks per day. People were having like severe inflammation of the joints and stuff like that uh, reported a significant improvement. So basically that just kind of gave me this the the fuel, so to speak, to go ahead and just launch the brand. So I launched it uh, in 2014 and it, it has been a slow process because um, the problem is or the challenge rather is that most people in America, they're not really familiar with herbalism and the herbs. It's like a small segment, you know, kind of like an underground movement. As I would kind of try to grow and expand, there was always this educational and awareness component, right? So it's like basically when, when people know about the herbs and I, I don't really sell like single leaf or single herb teas, I sell blends curated for um, certain functions of the body where it is like if it's immunity, if it's a detox, if it's for the blood. So sort of just, I, that's, that's the way I, I go about it. But when they, when they kind of have the opportunity to hear about it, hear the benefits, then they have that aha moment, right? And they're like, okay, I want to try this. I think this is important for my well-being. I've worked with some herbalists in the local area in Maryland. So I sort of kind of developed my own sort of style and choosing to kind of, if you think of the tea market, it's very broad, right? You have all types of teas, black teas, Lipton teas, flower teas, etc. But I sort of chose to focus on the herbal segment, which is kind of a small niche. Most people, when you talk about the herbs and or herbalism or herbal teas, rather, you know, you just think about something where maybe like your grandmother or some older relative, you know, you would take like, for instance, you have an upset stomach or, you know, where you should take ginger, blah, 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 or spearmint or something like that. And it's mostly the older generation that knows about that stuff. But now with the revolution in just kind of, um, natural and alternative medicines and stuff like that. It's kind of catching on. I want you to sort of present it in a sort of a more of a high end way or something that is sought after. Cause I feel like, Hey, why not? I mean, you have alcohol and all these things and I'm not knocking on alcohol in any means, but you know, you have these different brands that present it so amazingly. So I, I kind of said, well, I would like to do that for herbal teas as well. The blends that I curate have anywhere from um, five to eight different herbs per blend. That's different parts of different plants per blend. You know, a lot of herbs have different tone, I mean, notes or flavor profiles, right? Some of them are very neutral. Some of them are, a few of them are pleasant, which, more, which are more popular. And then you have the ones that are um, just harsh, right? So that's why a lot of the companies out there tea companies you go to the grocery store, they tend to stay away from more of the 
uh, the harsh, the more bitter tasting herbs because they know that people, you know, are so used to sweet stuff. I've, I'm able to blend and arrive at a cup of tea that you can have and then you can still, you don't even have to use a sweetener. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's kind of a, so some insight behind it. So sorry I took a kind of a long winding answer. <laughs> Oh, it's great. Um, and there's so much that goes into being a business owner, being an entrepreneur, and, you know, really finding your way in your niche. Have you found acceptance in the cannabis industry? Have you, you know, started to work? Do you work with CBD in your team? Have you thought about it? Right. So, so that's what kind of brought me to you. And I've, I've just been, you know, I have not really been done a lot of work in the cannabis space, but um, over the, like, past year or two ago I decided to sort of um, formulate one of my blends and include CBD in there so um, and of course you know that very well just the, the, the restrictions oh my goodness <laughs> it's crazy right so I decided to do to go the hemp route right because it's a little less restrictive although I'm having a lot of challenges in there so the one blend that I'm using the CBD right now, it's my CBD body relax. So basically the herbs in this blend are curated to kind of just help you to, um, to calm you down. Like after, after a long day, a bustling day, you come home with your family or your, your spouse, whatever, you can just relax and then just have that cup of tea. A lot of the herbs in there function as sort of a mild sedative. So it kind of just relaxes the body. And of course, adding the CBD, the broad spectrum, isolate to that, you know, just kind of fits right into that. So I think like it's like a perfect combination. So that's kind of like my introduction in the CBD space. And, um, but it has been very much a challenge, right? If the marketing and the reaching around and everyone is just kind of clamping down on that, you can't have ads, people are restricting you, Facebook, Google, because believe it or not, this is like my most popular blend. Um, but it's just kind of been, it's just been very difficult, but I'm just confident that, you know, as time goes by and, um, more and more people are educated about it. They will be willing to, hopefully the, re the regulations will kind of loosen up a bit. What are some of the core values of Zabika Life? You know, what do you look for? What do you represent? What does your brand represent? And when you look for partners, what must they have on that checklist? For me, at the essence of Zabika Life is a passion for health and healing. That's, that's really the thing for me. So if I'm going to partner with anybody, I look for somebody who is in the space and they have that same passion and they have that same intention. That is not just about uh, making money, but whatever product or service they're, they're pushing or they're promoting, it's something that really, at the end of the day, it really enhances the, our lifestyle. And of course, the usual suspects, the core values of honesty, integrity, and, and all that good thing. So these are the things that I look for um, in partnering with someone. So when it comes to actually manufacturing <clears throat> product, ethical sourcing. People want to make sure that, you know, where they're spending their money is going towards a good cause, that they align with that brand. Yes. Which is it that you get your herbs from specifically? Can you tell our followers what that looks like? So, yes. So basically, I, I, am, I used to actually source um, the herbs myself and the blend and package myself, but um, just the business has kind of grown to the point where it was just too much for me alone because we're a small company. So um, like I would source from Mountain Rose Herbs. Uh, I would source from Frontier, um, another company that has like strong core values and in just their fair, fair trade and the, the, the countries that they, they purchase the herbs from, right? Because the herbs I use in my blend, they come from all over the world. It's not just the Caribbean, it's some from North America. Uh, some herbs come from um, Central and Latin America and also uh, some from Europe. Thankfully, I was able to partner with a, with a um, small Kupaka of in Arizona, Lifetime Teas, and it has been a great relationship so far. And um, so he sources his ingredients from, from credible suppliers all over the world, and he has a pretty robust um, process of, of grading and selecting. And, um, and so that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now in the process. And I plan to kind of, you know, just keep, keep that... Um, keep that relationship going. Yes, you want to grow and you want to expand, but I do not want to lose the quality, right? I do not want to lose that. I want to hold on to that as much as I can. And also just from a, a perspective of <clears throat> giving back. So as I said, in the, in the beginning, I'm from Dominica, which is the nature isle of the Caribbean. 
if you if you haven't been there, I would recommend that you go there and also your your listeners. It's an amazing island. It's very green, very pristine, uh, natural air. Um, you know, they've just begun to relax a little bit. The the CBD, the cannabis, you know, back there right now. They just, the governments have just been able to ease some restrictions on that. We have some sort of um, indigenous herbs to the island, right, of Dominica. And so that as a part of a phase two for me is actually being able to get source my herbs directly from Dominica, right? Because I've already identified um, some producers on the ground. And so as well as just being able to source those herbs, those herbal blends specifically from the island, which will then be a source of income and a source of revenue. And also importantly, sustainability. I am very much a big proponent of sustainability. Like I believe firmly and why I like the herbs again is that the indigenous herbs are already resilient to the climate, right? Um, it doesn't require, uh, the benefits of the herbs is that they don't require like um, chemicals, pesticides, right? You know, you, it's basically, you just it just grows, right? So. Um, so that's another thing that I, I look for strongly, um, just, you know, the, the environment, sustainability, and making sure that the end user, when he or she drinks a cup of Zabico like tea, they're getting the best cup of tea there is. People that are enticed, that want to follow the brand, where can they go? Where, how can they even order some of your tea? So they could go, right now, everything is online. So um, they could go to Zabico Life, www.zabico life, L-I-F-E dot com. And they can also follow, follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. So these are the platforms that are available for your listeners and for your followers at this time. I, I really want to sort of kind of align with the movement, the grassroots movement in the CBD space, because I believe by and large, these are uh, uh, brothers and sisters that, understand you know that that understand and appreciate the value that that is derived from the plants i i lived in a rural part of northern california for many many years in humboldt county in the emerald triangle i don't know if you're familiar but it's where a lot Not of the cannabis comes from um and we're very back to the land very natural very bohemian and so right. I, I can appreciate um, everything that you're saying. I have studied herbalism myself. And so, uh, you know, it is a pleasure making your acquaintance and thank you very much for speaking with me. And I look forward to really showing our audience, uh, you know, about your, about Zabico and to share, you know, the herbal knowledge. And so thank you very much for this interview. Definitely. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for having this. Absolutely. All right, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>